In this part three video, we're gonna talk about animation and compositing. We're gonna start out by creating a motion graphic piece that we will later place into these LED panels. So, so far everything we created is like an entire scene. All the objects live in the scene called scene. Now, obviously we wanna change this to something more, I don't know, something like main. So it's the main scene. I don't know if it's any better, but we're going to create a new scene where we're gonna create our motion graphic piece. So once we create that motion graphic piece in the new scene, then we're gonna export it out of that scene and then bring it into this scene to put it into these LED panels. So let's create a new scene by going over here to this button right here, click on it, click on new scene. Now we have a new scene with nothing in it, not even a default cube, which is kind of strange. All right, so it's blank, it's completely from scratch. So we're gonna to go to render settings. We wanna make sure we stay consistent with the color management. So let's change it from filmic to standard. We talked about this before. Then we're gonna to go to output tab here. We're gonna change the resolution to 2000 by 1000. Now, if you remember, we created a placeholder for our LED panels and that placeholder was 2000 by 1000. So we wanna make sure we stay consistent with that because we're gonna take this animation that we create in this scene, we're gonna replace it for that placeholder. So it's very important that we stay consistent here. Then we're gonna to go to frame start. We're gonna change that to zero and then end to 160. So our animation is gonna go between zero and 160. Frame rate, we're gonna set that to 30 frames and that is it for the settings. All right, so let's start building our graphic. And the first thing we're gonna do, we're going to import a new plane. It's gonna be our background color. So let's do that. We're gonna hover our mouse over this window right here. We're gonna to go to top view. You can either press seven on the numpad, and if you don't have numpad in your keyboard, then you can just press tilt key and go to the top. And now we're looking at it from the top. We're gonna to bring in a new plane, so press shift A. Let's go to mesh plane. So now we have a new plane in here. We're gonna call this one background color. So it's gonna be our background color. I'm gonna to go to rendered view. So then we're going to press tab key to go into edit mode, press S to scale, and then immediately I'm going to click away. So now we have all these options to adjust. So for X, we're gonna set this to six. For Y, we're gonna set it to three. And then for Z, we're gonna keep it at one. All right, so those are my settings. So make sure you copy it if you wanna follow along. So while we are still in edit mode, I want to insert some loop cuts. So to do that, press Control R and then hover over this area like this. Scroll on your middle mouse button to add more loop cuts. I'm gonna add something like this, like seven cuts. So that's good. Then I'm gonna press Control R again. We're gonna insert more loop cuts on the vertical. So like that, like three, like this. These will come in handy when we start animating the faces. So that's my setup right here. Press tab to get out of the edit mode. Now we are in object mode. As you can see, our plane doesn't have any material. So we're gonna go over here to the material tab and we're gonna create a new material. We're gonna call this one BG color. Okay, so now we have BG color and it is principled. So we're gonna change this to emission because we don't have any lights in our scene. So in fact, we will not have any lights at all. And because we're gonna get away with it by using emission, emission just emits light, so that's what we're gonna go with. And we're gonna change this color to orange. So remember, we had a color swatch right here, but when you restart Blender, you kind of lose things that you don't use. And so we need to load it up again. So click on this folder here, let's find it again. And remember, all of these things are available to download. Make sure you click at the bottom of this video, click on the link below, download all of these so you can follow along. We're gonna select this colors uh, image, it's a color swatch, we're gonna import it, click on open image. So now we have it back in here. Now for this background color, we want to click here and we want to select this orange right here. All right, so let's import our background text. And for that, we're gonna hover our mouse right here, press Shift A, let's click on text. Now we have a new text on our scene. You see it in the outliner, you see it in here, but we wanna adjust the Z here. We're gonna slightly move it up on 0.01 just to separate it from the plane. We're gonna select it, press tab to go into edit mode. We're gonna change it to something like Euchre Media. You can change it to anything you want, but that's what I'm gonna change it to. Press tab to get out of the edit mode and into object mode. So now we're gonna select it. We're gonna go over here and change the name of it to background text, okay. So now I'm gonna to go to text options in here. We're going to collapse everything. We're gonna to go to font and for regular, click on this folder to load a new font. We're gonna search for impact. Now I'm gonna go with impact because 
It's free, everyone has it. It's bold, it's uh, condensed, so it's perfect for this. Again, select this, open font. So now it replaces it for that, so it's looking better. Then we're gonna go over to, well, let's go to size. Right here, we're gonna take it up to 10. So it's huge now. Then we're gonna go to paragraph. Let's collapse this, paragraph. And for horizontal, we're gonna change it to center. Vertical, we're gonna take it to center as well. So now it's in the center of our scene. That's great. We do need to create a new material for this. So we're gonna go to a material tab and we're gonna load this background color. Obviously it's the same color, so it doesn't really help us all that much, but we're gonna create a duplicate of this by clicking on this icon right here. So now we have a new, completely new material. We're gonna change this to something like background text. And we're gonna go to color here and we're gonna slightly push it on hue to the right by changing this number right here from six to five. I'm gonna press enter. You can see it's shifted and it kind of gave us a little, you know, contrast between both colors. So we have background, which is one orange and then text is slightly darker. So that's exactly what I want. All right, so let's import an image of our football player. And before we do that, we need to go to edit and preferences, we're gonna activate an add-on that's gonna help us out big time. So go to add-ons, we've done this before, we're gonna search for image. So it's this images as planes add-on. Make sure you have this one checked, activate this one, it's gonna help us big time. In fact, here's what it allows us to do. So let's do this. We're gonna go to file and then right here, import. Now we have this option right here, images as planes. So when you click on it, you can navigate over to the folder where your image is at. In my case, it's this right here. So again, all of these images are available to download. Go to the bottom of this video, click on the link that you need to click on to download this image. So I'm gonna select this image right here and click on import image as plane. So watch this, it imported it as a plane, it's a little small, I'm gonna select it right here. We're gonna to go to transform properties and on Z we're gonna make the adjustments. It's kind of hiding behind everything, so we're gonna move it up 0 0.02 this time. So it's gonna be the first one we see. Then we're gonna select it right here, hit S to scale. And then if you have numpad, press nine. And if you don't, just make sure everything's set to nine. All right, so now we have it in here. We're gonna move it around. Maybe let's press G to kind of position it. And let's position it maybe for right now, right about here. It's up to you, it's subjective where you wanna position it. But for me, that's gonna work. Now, obviously it's looking a little too dark. What I need to do, I need to select this right here, go to material tab, and we have this quarterback material, but the problem is we're not seeing it in here. Remember, we went to worlds, so now we need to switch it back to object. And when you do that, now we have all the nodes we need to adjust in here. So we have this image node that goes into the base color, but we need to put it into emission right here. So we wanna switch it from here, just click and drag and attach it to emission like this. So it's looking better, it's still a little washed out and it's because of this base color. So we're gonna change this base color to black, all the way to black. And now it looks great. All right, so let's bring some more text because we do need text for the first name and last name. And to do that, you know the drill, just hover your mouse over this, press Shift A. Let's click on text, we have a new text here. Let's change the name of it to first name. We're gonna select this and move it up. So we're gonna go to transform properties and on Z here, we're gonna move it up to 0 0.02. And we're gonna select this, hit tab to go into edit mode. We're gonna change this to first name. Hit tab to go back to object mode. We're gonna go to the text options in here. We're gonna change the font to impact. So go to fonts, we already have impact loaded. So we can just click on this icon here and select impact. That's working. So next, what I wanna do, I wanna change the color of this. Right now it doesn't have any materials at all. So let's go to this material tab and we're gonna create a new material. This one's gonna be called text color, okay? And instead of principled, we're gonna change this to emission and we're gonna set this color to this white right here. So click on this color and then just pick this white right here. So that's looking good. Next, I want to select this and duplicate it. So press Shift D to duplicate, and click away. Now we have a duplicate right here. We're gonna call this one last name. Okay, then we're gonna move it down and we're gonna hit tab key to go into edit mode and uh, we're going to change the name of it to last name. And uh, I notice the A is a little too close to L here. So if you move on left and right arrow keys, you can kind of go to the side. We can go in between the L and A and if you hold alt and then move on left and right arrow keys, 
you can adjust kerning like this. Super handy. It's similar to After Effects if you're used to that. So hit Tab key to get out of the edit mode. And now we are back in object mode. So we need to increase the size of this one. So select this last name. Let's go back to text options. And in here, under size, we're going to change this to two. So it's going to be twice as big as the first name. So now we can select it and kind of move it around to right about here. You can also press G key. And if you press Y, you can lock it in on Y. Sometimes it's easier to see what you're doing this way. So you can position it right about here. That's good. I'm going to press Shift key and select the first name. And then if you press G, you can move it around. So we can place it maybe right about here. That's good. All right, so let's animate our entire scene. So here's what we need to do. Before we get to animation, I want to select this image right here. I do want to subdivide it. Right now it's just a one face, but we're going to be animating different faces. I want to have that like pixelated type look. So I need to create a lot of different faces for this image. So I'm going to select this, hit tab to go into edit mode. And then right now it's just a one big face, but I want to subdivide it. So I'm going to right click and click on subdivide. When you do that, you'll have this window pop up here and you can crank up on that. You can, you can't really see it in here, but right now you can see we're entering a lot of different faces. So now we have plenty to work with. So that's good. So make sure you just crank this up to 10 and you're good to go. So let's go back to rendered view. So that's all we need to do before we do animation. Hit tab to go out of the edit mode into object mode. So we're going to start by animating the background solid color right here. So we're going to select it. We're going to go to modifiers and we're going to use this modifier called build. So in here, it's a pretty cool modifier. So if I just preview this right here, you can see it's just kind of animating it in, you know, kind of interesting way, but we can say, Hey, let's do this random. And when you do that, it's just randomly going to pop in like that, which is kind of cool. But then we can say when to start and when to end. So I'm going to say, Hey, let's start at zero frame zero and let's end at frame 40. So it's going to start at zero and it's going to end at 40. That's all. Now I just want to do the same thing for everything else. So I'm going to deselect everything, press Alt A to deselect everything. Then I'm going to select the background text, shift select the image of the quarterback, then shift select the first name and shift select the last name. And then the very last thing you want to select will be the solid color. So make sure you select that. So now we have everything selected. And now I want to link everything selected to the modifier of that solid color. So I'm going to press Control L to link, right? To go make links here. And we're going to say, let's link up, not to material, not the animation, but modifiers. So when you click on it, watch what happens. So now when I click away, and if I preview this, you can see everything is animating, which is great. Now we just need to do some minor adjustments for the background text. Instead of it starting at zero, I'm going to push it up 10 frames. I'm going to say, hey, let's start at 10. And then instead of it ending at 40, we're just going to go up 10 again. So we're going to say 50. That's it. Then for the image of our quarterback, we're going to do the same thing here. Instead of it starting at zero, we're going to go to 20. And instead of it ending at 40, we're going to say plus 20, which will be 60. All right. So the same thing for name. Now, name can be starting at zero to 40. That's fine. The last name. We're going to start at 10 and then end that at 50. So now if I preview this, you can see it gives us a nice animation, but we're not done yet. Here's what I want to animate. So right now we have this text right here. As you can see, if I scroll, it's kind of static and I want for it to have a slight animation to the left. So let's animate this and we're going to do the same thing we did before. We're going to select this text. We're going to go to transform properties and we're going to animate it on X right here. But we're not going to set any keyframes. We're going to use a driver. It's something we've used before. So just right click, click on add a driver. And in here, we're going to get rid of this variable right here. And we're just going to type frame divided by negative 100. And negative will just go in the opposite direction. So then I'm going to click away here. And now it is lit up in purple. So if I scroll through here, you can see the text is animating. So it's looking really great. Now that we have everything animated, the next step for us is to take this animation and export it out of this scene and into the main scene so that we can plug it in into the LED panels. But I just noticed we forgot to label this new scene. So we're going to click here and we're going to call it LED screen graphic. Okay. So next we need to import a new camera because you do need to have a camera in your scene in order for us to export our animation. So let's bring in a new camera, press Shift A, and let's click on 
camera right here. When you do that, it's going to bring it in into your outliner. And also there, you can see it highlighted. So we can pull up on it like this, but we want it to be right here. We're going to select this. We're going to go to transform properties and we're going to move it all the way to 10. So it's going to float way out here. Now I do want to see what my camera is looking at. So I want to go in the camera view to do that. If you have numpad, you can press zero or if you don't, you can press the tilt key and we can go to view camera. When you do that, now we can see what we're looking at. And as you can see, we're not looking at the right thing here. We need to see more of our real estate here. So we're going to select the camera. We're going to go to camera options and right here, focal length, we're going to adjust this. We're going to take it down to 30. And as you can see, now it fits everything. We can kind of scroll through here and everything is working well. Next, let's go to the output tab here and we're going to go to output here. We're going to set it to file format right here to PNG and then color. You can leave it at RGBA, but we don't have any alpha. So we're going to say RGB. So that's good. And then you just want to click on this folder to tell Blender where you want to export this animation. So we're going to go to renders folder and this LED screen render. And that's where we're going to drop it. We're going to call this one LED screen graphic. Okay. Then press on accept. Now you can see it. Boom. And that's all you need to do. The next step is to render. Now you can either go to render and then click on render animation, or you can use a keyboard shortcut control F12. All right. So now that we have our animation rendered, the next step is to go to the main scene. So click on this icon here, click on the main scene. And now we are in the main scene. So here's what I want to do next. I want to select one of these LED panels. Then we're going to navigate over to the material tab. We're going to select this LED screen graphic. When you do that, you'll see the entire material here, all the nodes, which is exactly what I need here. So that's what, what we created before. And remember, we created this image placeholder that we created for this LED panel. Now we need to replace it for the real animation that we just created. And to do that, we're just going to click on this icon right here. It's going to bring up this window. We're going to navigate over to the renders folder and right here, LED screen render. That's where we rendered our entire animation. So we're going to select all of these images by pressing a now all of them are selected. We're going to click on open image and now we have them loaded up in here. Now we do have some more options in here and all we need to do for start frame, we want for it to start at frame zero. So click here and just change it to zero and press enter. And that's it. That's how easy it is. Now make sure you also check this auto refresh. When you check this, you can see it animating in here. So now you can scroll here. You can see it's animating before we animate the led panels and the camera. I do want to make some adjustments. So right now we are in a default layout, but we can also navigate over here to animation tab. When you click on it, now we have a different animation layout, which is super handy. It gives us everything we need to do animation. So we're going to adjust things in here, going to pull up on this some um, and maybe slide it to the right, kind of create some space in here. So on the left side, we have this camera view. So in here we can see what the camera sees very handy. Then on the right side, we have the 3d view. So you can just navigate around, kind of select things very handy. And at the bottom here, we have like a timeline. It's a dope sheet. You can see we can set keyframes, but you can also switch between dope sheet and a graph editor by pressing control tab like this. So it's going to come in very handy. We'll talk more about that later. As you animate things, you don't want to go to the rendered shading because obviously, you know, it has to calculate a lot of things. It will slow down your animation. So the playback speed is not going to be accurate. It's going to be lagging a lot. So you're not going to get that accurate speed as you animate. So you definitely want to stay probably within this, like a solid shade and, but you can turn some things on and make things a bit more enjoyable. You can click here and maybe you know, set it to random or something, or maybe texture. So you can see our textures. In fact, I'm going to leave it at that. So that's probably going to be good enough. And then on the right side here, it's probably going to be easier for you to see if I change it to something like random. So now we can see things better. It pops things for us. But again, this is only for our eyes. It's not going to be like that in the final render. So that's going to be my setup. Now we're going to make some output settings. We're going to go to the output tab in here. And uh, resolution, let's X and Y, let's set that to 1920 by 1080. Make sure you're still there. And frame start, we're going to set that to zero. And then frame end, we're going to set that to 160. As you can see, our animation is going to go between zero and 160. It already made those adjustments in here. That's great. Frame rate, let's set that to 30 frames per second. And output, let's go ahead and set that up. 
so we don't have to do that later. So we're going to tell it to render everything to something like, let's go to renders maybe, right here, final renders. Right here, that's where it's going to render to, but you can select any folders on your computer. You can call it something like sports bumper. And I'm going to hit accept. And then as you can see, we have the path to it in here. We can set the file format to PNG. Now this time for color, you do want to set it to RGBA. We do want to include the alpha. So that's really important. All right, so let's animate the LED panels. All we need to do, just animate one of them, like this one right here. We're going to animate it, then we're going to take this animation and apply it to the rest of them. So make sure you have it selected, press period to zoom right in. Then we're going to go to transform properties. We're going to go to Z rotation, and we're going to be animating this right here. So let's go to dope sheet. Let's take our time indicator to zero. We're going to set some keys at frame zero. So let's go back to Z property here. Let's take it to negative 90. So now it's open. We're going to set a keyframe for that. So click on this icon here to create a keyframe, as you can see it right here. Then we're going to take this time indicator to about 50, frame 50. We're going to go back here. We're going to set this value to zero. So it's closed now. We're going to set another key. So now we have this basic animation. So it's open. We can fly through it. Then as we fly through it, it's going to close. We can see the animation. We want for it to stay closed all the way to frame 120. And then from here, we want to open again. So at 120, we're going to go over here, set another keyframe at zero. And then from zero, we're going to go to 160 here. And we're going to set this to negative 90. So we're going to go back here, negative 90, and then create another keyframe. So essentially, here's what we have. So we have this right here animating. So it's going to be open. We can fly through it. Then it's going to shut. And we can see the LED animation. And then we want for it to open again so we can fly out. That's all. But I do want to adjust this animation. We want to go to the graph editor. To do that, just hover over this area, press control tab. We talked about this. So now we can see all of these splines. And if you want to see the entire animation, you can just press home key. It will show you the entire animation. That's good. I'm going to move it out of the way so you can see it better. Okay, so now we have our animation kind of in a visual form. We can see that we're starting here. It's open. And then it closes right here. Then it stays closed throughout here. And then it opens again. But I want to adjust the timing in here. Like right now, it's a bit too harsh. I want to soften this a bit more. I want for it to be gradually closing, right? So I'm going to select this handle right here. Hit S to scale. We're going to push this all the way to here. Now you can see it's more of a smooth close, which is good. Now I want to do the same thing here as well. I want to slowly open. So we're going to select this, select this handle, hit S to scale. We're going to push it all the way to the edge. So now it's going to be more of a smooth open like that. That's good. So let's preview this. Here's the close and then it's going to open right here. So that's it for the animation. Now we want to take this animation and apply it to the rest of them. So here's what we need to do. We're going to select all of them and we want to select this last. It's very important. So select this one, shift select all of them. And then we want to shift select this one very last. It's very important because whatever you select last, that's the object where we're going to grab the animation from and apply it to the rest of them. So shift select this one last and then press control L and we're going to link the animation. So click animation data, boom. And now all of them have the same animation. All right. So it is time for us to animate the camera. And for that, we're going to go to the outliner here, this right here. And we have our camera control and we also have the camera. We're going to be animating camera control first. So make sure you select that, go to transform properties. We're going to go to rotation, and we're going to be animating the Z property, this right here. So we're going to start at about 15 degree angle. We're going to take our time indicator to the very beginning. And right here, we're going to set a keyframe at 15 by clicking here. So now we have a keyframe. We're going to move it forward all the way to the very end to 160. So make sure you go there. And then we're going to take this value down all the way to something like negative five. So negative five, let's set a keyframe. And I'm going to hover over this, press home to see the entire animation. I'm going to adjust it slightly over here. So now we have this animation kind of just, you know, going from one side to another. So basically it just does this. Now, as you can see, our animation has like a slight speed up and slight slow down. Basically it's a Bezier curve, but I want for it to be flat. I want for our animation to be consistent. I don't want to have any speed ups or slow downs. In other words, I want to make it linear. And to do that, you can do it a number of different ways. You can right click, and go to interpolation mode and click on linear this way. Or you can just use a keyboard shortcut, which is T. Now you can do it anywhere. So you can press 
T right here. And then you can go to linear. You can press T again to Bezier, T again to linear. You get the idea. So T will get you there. It's very handy. So now we just have like a simple animation. Again, it's just side to side, just to show that there's depth, which is nice. So next we want to animate the camera. We want to zoom in and zoom out. So let's do that. We're going to go to the first frame right here. We're going to select the camera. Next, we're going to go to transform properties and we're going to be animating Z right here. That's what we're going to be animating. So we want to zoom right in here. So let's go something like, let's do one. That's good. looks like it covers everything. So that's good. We're going to set a keyframe. Y1 right here at the first frame. Then we're going to go to frame 40 and we want to zoom out. So let's do this. We're going to pull out. Let's go to like negative 13. There you go. Let's set a keyframe. So that's what we have it basically zooms out. And then we want it to stay kind of where it's at right now until frame 120. At 120, we're going to set another keyframe for negative 13. And then we're going to go all the way to 160. We're going to zoom right in. Remember, it was just one, type one. It zooms right in. Let's set a keyframe. And again, hover over this area, press the home key so you can see the entire animation. Let me adjust this over here so you can see better. So this is our animation right now. You can see this is in the visual form. We kind of zoomed in right now. We're going to zoom out and we see the animation here. It stays flat here and then we zoom back in. But I don't want for it to be flat. Like I want for this to kind of have slight pullback. In other words, it's going to zoom out and I want it to keep zooming out slightly. So we're going to select this right here, press G to move it and then Y to move it on the Y axis. So we're going to position it right about here to where this edge is kind of touching this just slightly. So now we have like a this kind of animation. See, it's still pulling out right here. It still has some kind of animation and then it goes back in. Now, obviously, we need to make some adjustments in here. So I'm going to select this because right now it kind of like has a quick zoom that I don't like. I want to have more of a gradual zoom back in. So I'm going to select this point right here. Press R to rotate it. We're going to tilt it slightly so there's a slight angle here to kind of break it apart a bit more so it's more of a smooth transition all right something like that might be good we're going to maybe slightly rotate it you can adjust this however you want to that's what i'm going to go with i'm going to select this handle press s and let's pull it all the way back to the edge so we have more of a gradual smooth line here and essentially that's what the curves are good for you kind of look at it just to see where it's kind of rigid looking and see if you can smooth it out and make it more smooth. Like right here, we have too much of a jump here. So I can select this and select this handle, hit S to kind of stretch it out some. So now it's more smooth right here. So let's see what that looks like. So it kind of zooms out, it's smooth. I don't see any big hiccups and then it goes back in. And again, you can go back here, maybe adjust some of these, hit S to scale, see what you can do. You know, maybe this can be brought in more anyway. You can go nuts on this, but I'm going to leave it as is. Let's see what this looks like. Yeah, it's working for me so far. And then it slowly zooms right back in. All right, so it is time for us to do some compositing. And for that, we're going to go into a different layout. We're going to click on this compositing tab. So now we have a different layout. We do have this compositor, and that's what we're going to be using to composite in. The first thing you want to do is check this use notes. And now we have two notes. The first one right here is called render layers and don't overthink this one is just this node that allows you to pick a scene in this case because we are in the main scene by default it sets it to the scene that we're currently in but if you have others you want to choose from just select that one and once you pick the scene then you can grab different passes from that scene that you can use to composite in here so for example right now we have the final render we have the alpha channel and the depth so if i go to because we are in the main scene right now i can go to layer properties and in here we have passes and as you can see we have depth right here z and when i uncheck it you can see it went away i can check it back in i can select any other passes like diffuse speculate you can see it adds on to this list so it's really awesome so if you come from something like cinema 4d think of it as something we did in the cinema 4d we, we would set up a render passes and then we would render them out from cinema 4d into something like after effects where we would composite them together well essentially instead of going to after effects to composite we would do it in here using notes that's all that is so in here i'm going to select this bloom that's what i want and we're going to be playing with that later, but not right now. So Bloom, remember, is just the highlights around the lights. Let's talk about composite. So wherever you push into composite is basically the final render. You know, if I push the image, 
This is image, by the way, is just a final render of the whole scene. So I pushed it to the composite. If I press F12 or if I go to render and click on render image, and if you click on that, you can see renders a new image in a new window. But each time I make any kind of changes, I don't want to be hitting F12 to see it. I want to see it in this window. So how can I do that? Well, for that, we have a node called viewer. Just press shift A or go to add either way. Then you can go to output and then viewer. When you click on it, you'll see this node. It's very similar to composite. In fact, the only thing that's different is the name. So, but viewer is only for our eyes. It doesn't really do anything. Like if you push this image to viewer, watch this, boom, it shows up in here, but that doesn't mean it's the final result. You want to make sure that the final render goes into composite. So don't forget this because sometimes you'll be compositing, you'll attach to this and you hit render and you see something different. So for example, here's what Bloom looks like. Right, this is what a bloom looks like. But if I press F12 right now to render, I see image. I see the final render, right? But I'm not seeing bloom because again, this is only for viewing purposes and that's for final render. I just want to make sure you know that. And here's another thing about viewers. So right now everything's kind of zoomed in, but you can actually adjust this. So you can go to the right side in here. If you don't see it, you can press on this icon or press N on your keyboard and then you'll show up in here. You can go to view tab and in here, we have some options for this viewer area. So we can either, you know, get different channels like red channel only, you can see red channel, you get the idea, but you can also zoom in and zoom out like this. You can move it on X and Y. You can click on move and actually move your mouse and it'll move. You can fit this to the entire window right here. And, you know, you can also select this viewer right here and then you can move it by clicking on it like that. So it's very handy, but I'm gonna click on fit and that way it fits our window. We can see what's going on here. So that's what this viewer does. Now let's talk about vignette. Let's create a vignette. And for that, I'm gonna connect this image to this viewer. So we're seeing the same thing. So it's connected, the final result is connected to the viewer and to the composite. So if I press F12, we'll see it there. If I preview it now in here, we'll see it in here as well. So let's create a vignette. Now vignette has a like a shape, like an ellipse shape right here, right? Well, that's what we're gonna bring in. We're gonna bring in a mask that looks like an ellipse. And for that, again, you can either go to add or press shift A. We're gonna go to mat and let's click on ellipse mask. When you click on it, you'll see a new node right here show up, but obviously we don't see what it's doing because it's not connected to the viewer or to the composite. So if I connect it to the viewer, boom, you can see it in here. This is what it looks like. I can adjust the width. Maybe let's set this to something like 0.9. And then on height, we can set it to something like 0.5. So this is what the vignette would kind of look like, but it's too sharp. We want to take those edges and feather them a bit. And to do that, we're just going to use a node called blur. We're going to keep it simple. So we can press shift A, and this time we can search for something like blur. And here's blur. We can click on it. Here's a node. Now, the cool thing about it, when you put it right over this line, it connects it. That's awesome. And in here, we can adjust the X. We can say, hey, let's go do something like 400. Boom, it, it will blur it on the X only. Then we're going to do the same thing for the Y 400. And now we have a vignette. So that's how easy it is. Now, what I want to do, obviously, we do have a vignette, but it's really just by itself. I want to take this final render, the image, and I want to connect or connect both of them, but I want to multiply them. So like this one and then shift select that one and then press control asterisk, boom. And then it will take image and then this one and connect them together into this node multiply node. Now, right now we're not seeing what's going on in the viewer because it's only connected to the composite. So now I want to have this one connected to the viewer so we can see what's going on. So right now you can see this value is set to one and because of that, the vignette is pretty harsh. I mean, it's pretty dark. Now you can kind of crank down on it and you can see vignette goes away. So essentially zero gives you the image, this image without the vignette. And if you go all the way to the right, then vignette is all the way. So what I want to do, I want to take this value to something like 0.75, something like this is good. So as you can see, it does gives us the vignette. It's a nice touch. So next, what do you want to do? You probably want to select these. And if you're not careful, like we'll be adding more nodes this area can get very, very busy. So I like to select some of them and group them. So to do that, just select them, press control G, and then it groups it. Now, the cool thing about it, it kind of groups it and puts it into a different kind of layout. So in here, you can still adjust it, but you can click on this icon right here and you can go back. And now notice this time, we just have a simple node that has 
all three of our nodes in. Now, if I want to access those again, I can just click on this icon and then it takes us to this area, which is very handy. It cleans it up. So let's go back here. We do want to label this group something like vignette. And there you go. All right, so let's add a dirty lens effect to our composite here. But if you don't know what that is, essentially, I'm just going to add like dirty lens around the lights only, like around the areas that emitting some kind of light. And for that, we're going to be using this balloon pass. I'm going to connect it to the viewer. Let's move this out of the way. All right, so as you can see, this is what the balloon pass looks like. Now, I'm going to essentially take this bloom pass and convert it into a luma mat. So let's do that right now. I'm going to press Shift A. We're going to search for a node called Hue Saturation. We're going to select this, drop it over this line to kind of connect it. So we're going from bloom to this node, saturation, hue and saturation, and then it's going to the viewer. So we're going to do this. We're going to take the saturation down to zero. So now it's black and white. So we're creating a luma mat. Next, I'm going to bring in curves. So let's search for curves. Let's bring in RGB curves. Let's connect it. So it's going, this bloom's going through hue and saturation. We desaturated it. Then it's going to curves where we can adjust the brightness. We can tone things down, but I'm going to brighten it up right about here. Something like that is good. So essentially we created a luma mat. And the way luma mat works, basically wherever there's white, I want to apply some kind of texture. And wherever there is black, it's going to ignore it. So we're going to bring in an image. And I'm going to use a note, press Shift A. Let's search for image. And we're going to bring in a note called image. It's blank, but we're going to load our image. So we're going to go to tutorial assets, images, and we have this dirty lens overlay image. It's something, you know, I took, I found a folder that had some dust in my garage, just took a picture of it and did some, you know, Photoshopping. And next thing you know, we have some dirty looking texture. So I'm going to select this. By the way, you can download this for free. Go to the bottom of this video, click on the link and uh, you can follow along. So click on open image. And now we have this image. We can see what it looks like by connecting the image to the viewer. And as you can see, it's just a bunch of dust. That's all that is. Now I want to take this texture right here and apply it to only areas that are, let me connect this, that are white. So that dust is only going to be seen in the white areas. Let's do that right now. Well, for that, we need to do one thing. So I'm going to select this, press Control Plus. As you can see, it creates like a new node. And this node is just an add node. And we can click over here, just move image to image to the second one. We're going to make the first one black. Okay. So obviously, if I connect this to the viewer, let me kind of push this out of the way. You can see nothing is really happening. Do you remember this value right here? We adjust it with the vignette. You can kind of, if you go to the left, then the first image is visible. It's zero, so we see black. Then we can kind of add on. So it's the same concept. But instead of doing it here, I want to take our luma mat that we just created and attach it to that value right here. And now what it takes, it basically does this. So watch this. It takes the white area and it applies that texture only to that white area like that. So now you can see dirty lens kind of effect only around the lights. And it's really not all that visible around black. So now what? So we have created it. We only applied it around areas that are emitting lights. And now we need to take this and connect it with the vignette. So this is what the vignette looks like. Remember, it's the final image. So here's what we need to do. We're going to select this one, shift select that one. And then we're going to add. So press control plus. And now it connects both of them into this add node. And as you can see, now we have dirty lens right here, right there. We can, again, adjust it. If you take it all the way to zero, you'll only see, you know, this, but you can shift it around to where you can only see the vignette, only see this one. And if you go all the way to the right, then you see dirty lens and you can adjust how much of that you want either in here. You can also work with this uh, curves. You can brighten it up, do whatever you want, but I'm going to leave it around right here. So something like that is appropriate. And remember, we do want to group some things. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to select this node, shift select that one, that one, and also this one. So all four of them, we're going to pretty much group it, press control G. Now we group it. As you remember it before, we can go back and it's just a note. We can select this and zoom in. Let me zoom in so you can see better. So we're going to call this one Dirty Lens. So now we have a Dirty Lens node. Remember, you can click on it, 
You can adjust it in here if you want to make any kind of changes. We also have a vignette. Remember, you can put it right here. You can click on it. You can adjust the vignette. Very simple. But together, we took both of them and we added them together. And both of them are going to composite and viewer so we can see what we're doing in here. We are almost done with the entire thing. Now, the only thing we have left to do is to add some dust particles into our scene. And for that, we're going to use a footage. Now, I have already created a footage in Blender using, you know, particles and stuff like that. And by the way, it is available to download. So you can go at the bottom of the screen, hit download. You can download it for free. But if you do want to explore and get some other dust elements or anything like that, you should definitely go to actionvfx.com. Now, I am not getting paid to say this. I just love those guys. They're a good friend of ours. Check them out. They're super awesome. All right. So let me show you how to bring in footage into our compositing here. Press Shift A. Go to search right here. Click on it. Let's search for image. It's the same concept as we used to load any images. So click on image note. Now we have an image note. We're going to click on open. And instead of loading an image, we're going to navigate over to the footage. And we have this dust footage. So again, you can download it. Go to the description of this video. We're going to click on open. And now we have it in here. Now it's a bit different from image because we do have some things to adjust. So frames, let's take this up to 250. And then start frame, let's take it down to zero. That's it. So after this, we have this note that has the dust elements. In fact, let's see it. There you go. That's the dust. Then we have the final result here. And here's what I want to do. I want to take the final result and this dust and basically connect them into a node that's an add node, right? So select this one, hold shift, select that one, press control plus. As you can see, both of them are connected into this add node and both of them are going into composite and the viewer so we can see what's going on so notice this right here this value is set to one so we can see both the this one and that one together added together and we do have some particles in here right there so they're in there but i think they're too harsh but you can adjust this value you can go all the way to zero and you're only going to see the final image you can add slightly into your composition, you can start seeing them in there. So you can adjust what you feel comfortable with. But I'm going to go with 0.4. That looks good for me. And that's it. That's all you need to do. As you can see, we have the dirty lens effect. We do have the vignette. We also have the uh, dust particles, all of them. You know, this is the final note. Everything's connected to this thing. And you want to make sure that this one is connected to composite to the final render. And the viewer, well, you don't no longer need it if you don't want to, but just make sure it goes to composite. That's very important. And make sure use alpha is checked. And that's it. Once you're done, you can press control F12 to render the animation, or you can go to render and click on render animation. It's the same thing as control F12. Now, some of you watching might be wondering like, hey, I did render out my image sequence. What do I do with it? Normally, I would just import them as an image sequence into something like After Effects or Premiere. But since we are already in Blender, let's stay with Blender. Blender does have like a video editing ability that you can do all in Blender by going to File and then go to New and click on Video Editing. When you do that, you'll have the video editing layout. You can adjust it in here. You can hover over this area, press the Home key to kind of zoom in. But we're going to make some setting adjustments in here. So make sure resolution set to 1920 by 1080. You want to make sure it matches the animation that we are bringing in. Then we have this start and end. I'm going to set it to 0 to 160. That's the length of our animation. So I just want to stay with that. And then we have frame rate. I'm going to set it to 30 because that was the frame rate of the initial animation. So you want to stay consistent. And then if you want to render things out, this is where you would go. But Again, just a quick overview. So if you want to bring in your image sequence, you just hover over this timeline, press Shift A, go to image sequence, click on it, navigate over to the renders folder right here. And you want to make sure you select all of those images by pressing A and then click on add image strip. When you do that, you'll have it in your timeline. You can move it around, do whatever you want with it. I'm going to put it right there. So we have this kind of animation. It kind of loads it in. We have our dust particles right here. Everything's looking good. You can see the dirty lens, right? Maybe it's a bit too much, but it's working. But you can see that everything we did, we can visually see in here. Now notice it does have transparency at the beginning here, kind of comes from nothing, and then it goes to nothing. The beautiful thing about it, we can actually place images, video underneath there. So we can kind of use it as a wipe, like a transition. We can go from something into this world where we can either introduce a player or a topic. 
and then we can go into that topic. Very useful, not just for sports, but also like corporate videos. So let's bring in like an image. So we're gonna press Shift A, let's go to image sequence. It's the same concept to bring in an image. Then we're gonna navigate over to images and then uh, we're gonna select this football image. And then I'm gonna add image, there it is. We're gonna put it right here. Let's kind of adjust it to where, yeah, I think right about here is good. So as you can see, we're, we have this image right here. We're kind of like getting away from it into the scene. And now I wanna go into the next image. So next image, again, Shift A, let's go to image sequence. We're gonna select this image of the referees. Click on add image strip, there it is. You can put it anywhere. But right here, it's gonna start opening up right about here. So from here, let's extend it all the way. And there you go. So again, we're starting from this football image. It kind of like goes into the scene world and then boom, it goes into the referee. So again, you can use it however you want to, but I wanna thank you for watching this tutorial. If you wanna support what we do here, we do have some premium courses on Blender that you can check out at ukremedia.com. And if you wanna purchase the final project file of this tutorial, you can do so at ukremedia.com. The link to it is at the bottom of this video. It's five bucks and you will be supporting our channel. But until next time, my name is Sergey Praknevsky and this is ukremedia.com.